Today, my focus is on improving your sleep, and I call it Q2. What does that mean? Sleeping with quality and quantity. So having enough sleep, but also good sleep. So what happens with our sleep? First of all, we need to understand that as we age, sometimes we do get some sleep disturbances. And what can cause some of those common causes for sleep disturbances can be anything from just having pain and chronic pain in certain joints, um, poor sleep habits, uh, needing to get up to use the bathroom, anxiety. These are just a few of the things that might be interrupting your sleep. And I guess the older we get, the more baggage we have to be anxious about. So it's not uncommon for me to hear or even for me to experience uh, some problems with sleeping. We need to refresh and rebuild and renew. Ideally, adults should try to get between seven and eight hours of sleep a night. Hmm, think about that. Now, a minimum of four hours before you start feeling some of the side effects of maybe sluggishness or uh, crankiness or even depression in some cases. And if it goes on too long, sleep disturbances where you're not getting that minimum of four hours and hopefully more like seven or eight hours of sleep a night, it can become, it can then also lead to other chronic conditions and weaken your immune system. So we know that sleep is a very important factor in terms of your overall wellness, along with all the other things we talk about from hydration to diet to exercise. Hi, everybody. So we're talking about what are some of the ways that we can hopefully enhance our sleep quality and quantity. And I'd like to give you a few tips and uh, then what we'll do is hopefully maybe in the chat box you can share a few of your tips because I'm going to bet that most of us, if not constantly, at least at some period of time have woken up in the middle of the night, can't quite fall back to sleep too easily or have trouble falling asleep when you first uh, hit the pillow. So what are some of the tips? Well, probably the first one is sticking to a regimented sleep schedule. What does that mean? Really try to get your body and your internal rhythms used to a pattern, just like a baby. You know, we would say, put that baby down at certain times so they could establish a pattern. Well, it's the same for us as adults. So if you decide, well, I need to get up around, I don't know, 7 a.m. and you want to back it up with eight hours, well, then you know the time. I'm not going to do the math real quick here, but you maybe want to consistently get to bed around 10 o'clock at the latest. Another issue with creating that regular schedule and trying to stick to it is to avoid napping if you have sleep problems, in particular in the af later afternoon. So if you have to take a little power nap, or many of us really enjoy that power nap, try to keep it a little more towards noon rather than in the two or three or four o'clock. And try not to fall asleep, I know this happens a lot to me, on the couch watching TV at maybe seven or eight, and then you have that little cat nap, and then you wonder why you can't fall asleep once you are in bed at the appropriate time. So establishing that habit and trying to stick with it is one tip for better sleep, more restful sleep, longer sleep, uh, more quality sleep. Secondly is evaluate your environment that you're sleeping in. Is it too warm? Is it too cold? Um, is there too much light? We know that light really interrupts our sleep. So you might have to put some black tape on the uh, digital uh, clock or the TV if you have one in your room. It might have even just a little red dot in the corner that is creating a less than perfect environment for sleep. So you want to make sure that you have a good temperature, comfortable pillow, comfortable uh, sheets, things like that. Whatever makes you feel like that is enhancing your sleep, take a look at your environment and could even be your mattress is in need of a change. So that's all included in that environment. The other thing you want to do is you want to avoid electronics while you're in bed. And nowadays with the Kindles and the iPads and the iPhones, if you're into those devices, it's real tempting, even just the TV, to try to fall asleep with it. And we know that there's a rebound effect that oftentimes does the exact opposite. So what do you do if you're a book reader uh, and that puts you to sleep? 
Well, maybe think about getting a device that has an audio function and you just put a little one side in your ear and, and listen to the book instead of reading it and that way you don't have to have the light affecting you. Just a tip. I know that's one that works for me. Okay, so onward and upward. We want to eat well and we also want to time our eating so we're not eating heavy again late in the evening. So timing your meals so that you have plenty of time, you're not going to bed with a real full stomach or a real empty stomach either. Hydration is the same. You want to drink water, but not so much close to bedtime that you're up urinating more. So these are a few other tips. Avoid caffeine late in the evening. Um, I don't know how my dad does it, but he actually drinks a cup of coffee at night and still goes to sleep and he's 95. But that's his system. He's able to handle it. Most of us can't. So avoid, uh, do the decaffeinated tea if you have to. Have something warm at night because sometimes there are certain uh, rituals like chamomile tea or little warm milk that can help with sleep and I don't want you to avoid that. Avoid alcohol late in the evening. That too can have a rebound effect. Exercise daily. Da -da. Here we go for today. But try not to exercise too vigorously close to bedtime. Now, most of us probably don't, but there are those people maybe when they're younger and they're working and they don't get off work till seven o'clock and then they try to get their exercise in and wonder why they're all wound up before bed. So I don't know if that's you, but that is another consideration. And then last but not least, experiment with things. Um, again, you might find, wow, this really helped me. I bought that sound machine that sounds white noise or rain or uh, lilac uh, air mister or whatever the case might be. Experiment and keep a journal of what really allowed you to extend your sleep or avoid waking up in the middle of the night or get back to sleep rapidly when you do wake up because sometimes you just do have to get up and go to the bathroom. So those are all some tips to improve your sleep wellness. And hopefully, I see a lot of you are here. I like to talk enough to get you all in the room. Hey, Ken. Hey, Jen. Um, maybe you'll share a tip of yours if I didn't mention it already today. And we can all read it in the chat box, either after the workout or whatever. But again, my favorite tip is audio rather than video if I wake up and need something to take my mind off of whatever I'm anxious about, uh, and that really helps a lot. So today, instead, um, in, instead of just talking about sleep, we're going to talk about strengthening your sleep and strengthening your body. So our focus today is on a workout that will combine strength and balance. I should have mentioned this before, but you're gonna notice my 60 up board looks like quite the uh, contraption. I don't want to say torture contraption, but it's got my poles in the center because we're going to be focusing on strength. So I went ahead and moved my poles. And for those of you that have never done that yet, you use the red um, little thing that pushes that red button. If you have the red button, you press it to, or you can use your finger to depress that button and then pull the pole out on both sides and put them in the center. I would prefer it in the center. If you're not comfortable with that, work with them in the regular position. It just might not have the uh, greatest space for the band to flow through. But I'm going to have mine in the center the whole workout. So get that set up. I also put all four tubes on. So I have my short bands on the front hooks or the front uh, grips where it goes through. And again, if you've never put these on, um, it's pretty simple. You lace through the, um, the oh, what do you call that? The material, and then you just slip the tube through and slide it in till it's tight. And I've got the long bands on my side. Now, I like to always make this doable and give you, you know, ways to work around it if there's something you're not comfortable with. If you can't find your bands or you just don't want to put them on, you can also use a lightweight. So if you have dumbbells, you're welcome to do the exercises that we're doing with the band with a dumbbell. Just have them on a chair or something high enough where you don't have to go pick them up off the floor. You see I have my high bench. So if you wanted to use weights, you could have those nearby and something you could put it back down on in case you don't want to use them. Or you know what? Even a water bottle. 
You know, water bottles are about a half pound, so they're eight ounces or 12 ounces or close to a pound. So um, if you wanna experiment with using a free weight versus a tube, that's also something I'm gonna invite you to do. But today, I am banding us up because a lot of times we don't get to use the bands and I do want you to see how both of them function, both the short and the long. Dan uses them a lot and um, keep that focus strong today. All right, so with that said, I think we're ready to get going. Vicki, glad to see you here. Jen and Ken, uh, Pat, Betsy, wow, good group. Bob, Mona, whoa, welcome everyone. So I'm gonna put a little background beat on and let's pump it up. Here we go. First comes a warm up as always, and then we'll have a nice stretching cool down. So we'll have a nice full routine today. And hopefully you'll sleep well tonight. All right, so let's stand up nice and tall as always, starting with a posture check. Head over shoulders, shoulders over hips, knees soft, bent in the direction of the toes. I'm just gonna turn the music down a little bit. I don't want it to get too loud for you guys. All right. Once again, head over shoulders, shoulders over hips, feet about shoulder width apart. Let's start with an easy roll. Shoulders up, back, and around. And as you're doing this, take a deep breath. If you feel you need to hold something, then hold on with one arm. And then do a few and hold on with the other arm. I always want you to feel comfortable if you have balance issues. But if you can do both, let's make them a little higher. Elbows up, chest up, chin up. Now pull up and down, up high. Notice how my arms are coming up to the center and then down the sides. Now I'm gonna to start to round it like a circle over my head. Again, feel free to hold on and then switch arms. Keep going, one or both. Four more, three, two, last one. Now hands to hips, let's rise up and down. And let's go ahead and put our hands on our poles for now. Rise up to those toes and rock back. So now increase that range of motion through the ankle and feet. Lift up to the toes, rock back to the heels. Now as you rock back to the heels, you'll probably notice you're gonna stick your hips back a little bit to allow you to get those toes up. And if they're not quite coming up, don't give up. Just rock back as far as you can. Keep going. Warming up the ankles. Tighten your gluteal muscles, your buttocks muscles on the way up. Four more. Three. Two more. Last one. Now hold here, hands on the poles. We're gonna sit back and squat and lift one arm up and then bring it down. Again, opposite arm lifts as you sit into the chair squat. One arm up, hips back. Good, keep going. Think about keeping that core nice and strong. Inhale and exhale, loosening up the shoulder girdle and the hips. So we work it from the top to the bottom to the center. Here we go. Couple more. Inhale, exhale. Last one. Hold here. Now stand tall and just tilt your head to side, to center, to side. Think about pulling your shoulder blades down as you stretch your head ear to shoulder. Now we're gonna slow this down in half circle roll down. Here goes over and then it comes back. Good. Breathe, nice deep breaths. Inhale and exhale. Get rid of that <laughs> bed head or that bed neck. Good, four more. Three, shoulder blades down, two, 
Last one. All right, good job. Now from here, I want you to turn to the side, have one foot forward, one back, you're still holding, and then we're gonna roll that heel in and out, stretching through the hip and the calf. So we're gonna stretch the heel down, tuck under, just roll and rock. Keep your chin and chest up, reach the other arm, sweeping it forward and back, nice and smooth. Increasing that circulation. Inhale and exhale. Chest up. Two more. Last one and hold. Press that heel down. Bend that front knee, straighten that back leg. Place that back hand on your thigh and lean forward a little bit. Hold it. Now lift up, bend the back knee, center your body, and see if you can tap that front toe a little. Keep that weight back. Tap to that classical beat. Tap, tap, tap. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And bring it up and over. Roll that foot around. Good job. Now, other direction. Again, holding on. We're gonna roll that back foot in and out, loosening up that hip flexor, that calf muscle. Chin and chest up. Inhale and exhale. Let's mobilize that lower body. Two more. Now hold this one down. Lean forward, stretch. This hand comes onto your thigh. Hold it there. Take a deep breath and come back up and see if you can tap that front toe. You have to get your weight back a little bit. And tap, tap, tap. Four. And three, and two, and one. Bring it back to the center. Circle out that ankle. Good job. Chest up, chin up. Bring the feet back to the center. Back rolls and we're ready to go. Flat and roll. Take your time, flat on the way down, hands on poles. Inhale and exhale. Take your time, loosen and limber that back. Inhale and exhale. Two more times. Last one. Stand nice and tall. Look right, center, left. Right, center, left. Four more. Three. Two more. Last set. All right, now let's gently step up to one and one on your board. And let's just get our rocking feet on. Let's maybe step it out a little bit wider to about a two and two. And just start engaging those muscles. Good. Now you might need to go a little wider just so your knees don't hit your poles. That's okay. You can turn your toes out just slightly. Standing up nice and tall. Just get used to being on the board with these handles in the center. Push side to side. Engage those hip muscles, lunging, bending one knee, straightening the knee, up and down. Here we go. You got it. Four more. Three. Two. Last one. Now we're going to bottom out over on your left, and you're going to reach down. Now I have to take and switch so that I have my short handle. So remember, you can have a dumbbell if you want. 
and then we're just going to rock and pump. So down and up. Keep your chest up. Focusing on that bicep. Keep that elbow right alongside. You're still rocking through the motion, grounding, feeling your feet connect to the board, feeling your knees bending slightly, engaging the core, the bicep, the legs, hips, glutes. Nice. Keep going. Four more. I don't know. I hope you're feeling a little fatigue in this arm. Stop when you need to and just keep your arm at your side. Last one. Now from here, hold it on this side. Straighten your arm and then row that arm back, a high row. Stay grounded on your left side of the board. Nice. Pull and pull. So that arm is reaching down a little bit and then pulling up to your hip. Stay steady. You've got it. Pull up and down. Feeling those mid-back muscles. Four more. And three. And two. Now we're going to hold this last one. Hold and shift your weight. Keep that elbow back. Contract and give me a pulsing action with the leg going out to the side and the elbow tucking back behind you a little further. Feel for those mid-back muscles. Excellent. Up. Stay on that leg and come out of this when you need to. Remember, we're going for fatigue, not failure. Four, three, two, one. Now bring it down. Ooh, let's put that band back on the hook for a second and let's sweep that arm around. Get a little break. Good. Rock side to side, sweep and open. Sweep and open. All right, let's go back to the holding it, but this time on your right side, grab your short band or your weight, lean a little bit forward from the hip, and then push back like you're gonna hammer the back wall. Focusing in on that tricep muscle. Now again, if you don't have a band, even just doing the arm pattern and squeezing and thinking about contracting that muscle of the thigh you're standing on and that muscle behind the arm that you're extending is still gonna work. So do what feels right for you today. Good, four more, four and three and two. And one, and hold right here. Now from here, you're just gonna push up and down. Cross the chest, I call it the uppercut. The uppercut. Nice. I'm gonna feel a lot of tension building in this standing leg. If I want, I can add a little bit of a one-legged squat to this. Now that's gonna make it a lot tougher. So listen to your body, if you can handle it, Add it in. Up, down, up, down. Breathe. Four more through the chest. Three, two, last one. And again, let's put that on the hook and let's bring that arm behind you for the stretch, rocking side to side. Chin up, chest up. You should feel a sense of tiredness or fatigue in the muscles of this right arm and shoulder. Whew. That's great. All right, so now we're gonna take that tube again. Short tube, we're still working short tube. First half is short tube, second half is long tube. I want you to just find the center. So center your body, balance in the center, center balance. Now, hold it here, hold it here. And I want you to come over and oblique crunch to the side. So you can let it rock and bottom out and just bend just a bit through the rib cage. So think of dropping that rib cage towards the pelvis. Nice. Move through the ribs. 
Lateral tilt, lateral tilt. Doesn't have to be fast. Good. Just allow that core of your body, the center, to pull the band. Don't bend the elbow, bend from the waist. Beautiful. Last two. Last one. And then we're gonna step over to our right side. So bring both feet over to where you're bottomed out, okay? So you've got your right foot towards the edge. You're gonna take your left leg and you're gonna give me a hamstring curl and hold it up in space like that, all right? So from here, we're gonna do a one-legged squat and we're gonna hold this other arm in a static or isometric bicep position, bicep curl position. Bend that knee. Now, if you need to put the toe down, you can, but try to bear the majority of the weight on that right leg as you go up and down, keeping your chest high, keeping your chin parallel to the floor, fighting for balance. Four more. Three, two, last one. Now, from here, we're gonna tilt forward. Okay, tilt forward, extend that leg to the back, Hold it here and bring the arm a little more forward like an opposite arm leg reach and press them both. Up, up, up. Nice. Breathing. Feel that core engaged. Sometimes people ask me the best way to work the abs functionally. Getting them to tighten against gravity like they are right now. Keeping your posture in a long line as those limbs move up and down. Stabilizing, four, three, two, one. All right, I don't know about you guys, but my bicep is done, shake it off. All right, hold it here, take it up above you, twist the light bulb in the ceiling. Inhale, exhale. All right, time to come back to the center again. Well, we got a right arm, guess what? Got a left arm too, so let's get back to that short band, but this time on the left side, all right? So we started with a classic bicep curl with a nice, easy rocking motion using a wider stance so your knees are out of the way of those poles. Toes and knees can be out of it, a little plie style and shift through the leg as well as the arm. So catch your weight and bend the knee. I want you to feel this in the thigh muscles, the hip muscles, and the gluteal muscles. You got it. Beautiful. Keep that elbow right alongside you and inhale and exhale fully. Usually when you're strength training, you want to try to time your exhale for the harder part of the movement. So when you're really working against that resistance, blow out on the bicep, it would be about there, right? Let's do four more. And three, and two, and bottom out, and then row that arm, row. So we got a high row, you're pulling up that elbow, you're grounded on the right side now. You're pulling the elbow behind you. Try to feel this in those mid-back trapezius, rhomboids. Good. Reach and row. This leg is going to get a little static work as well, so stay grounded on it. Stay centered. Keep your body alignment tall. Whew. Now, with strength training, the amount of reps is really up to you. You want to work to the point of fatigue and then take a break. Let's do four more. And three, and two, and then we shifted our weight and we added a pulsing action with the leg and the arm working together. Oh boy, I don't know about you, but I'm feeling this. Up, up, keep that neck long. Keep that core strong. Balance tall. Four, three, two, one. All right, put it on the handle for a second and let's shake it out and rock it. 
Sweep it across your chest. Boy, I can feel it in this side. Nice. Sway it, reach it, expand the chest, open out, cross it over. All right, grab that short tube again. We're not done yet. All right, so what did we do here? We kind of came to the center, we found our center, and we started to push back into the tricep muscle group. You can ground yourself or make it a little more difficult by trying to hold center balance. Nice. You got it. Push back. Keep that body alignment a little. So notice from the side, I have a little bit of a hinge from my hip, but I'm not collapsing or letting my chest drop. Push back through that tricep. If you want to add a rocking action, you can do that too. Nice. Ooh, feel it. Keep going. Four more. Three. Two. Last one now. Let's bring it up and back. Up and back. Uppercut. Lift. Through the chest. Through the shoulder. Excellent. Engage those muscles, contract, lift, lower, lift, lower. Ooh, feeling it? Four more. Breathe. Three, two, last one. Okay, shake it off again. Ooh. If you feel the need to shake it off, you probably work to a perfect level of fatigue. All right, let's grab that band again, center our body, and do our oblique crunches to the other direction. So remember, you're keeping your arms straight, and you're just leaning. You can add the rock or try to stay to the center. It's a little different feeling. If you try to stay to the center, it's a little more balanced, a little harder, actually. And if you add the rock, it just kind of helps you get that motion going at that waist. That's it, keep the neck long. This gives your bicep and your arm a little break, doesn't it? That's it. Two more. Last one. And then let's step over. Remember, we're gonna have our left foot to the outside. We're gonna curl our right foot. We're gonna come to the isometric hold and then do a one-legged squat. Down and up, down and up. You can always kickstand or put that toe down if you need to, but it adds a lot more in terms of balance and strength to do it on one leg. That's it. <sighs> Breathing, inhale and exhale. Keep that head up high. Four more, and three, two. Now we're gonna lean forward purposefully on this and add that pulse. Arm and leg both pushing up towards the ceiling. Try to keep your body long and strong here. Remember, this is about the core engagement. Using those abs the way they were designed to be used to stabilize your spine. Lift, tighten your glute. Tighten up your arm, your forearm. Whew. I'm feeling it. Four, three, two, one, release. All right, put it back behind you, stretch it out. And I'm gonna invite you now to come down off your board gently and to bottom out, step off, get some water. Last week we talked about the importance of hydration. So I can't forget to keep you hydrated. Hi, Pat. Thanks, Pat. So glad you like my talks. Last time we talked about four to five gulps being about that four ounces. So let's do it. We want to drink about four ounces every 20 to 20 minutes of exercise, 15 to 20 minutes. Okay. With that said, and again, thanks for the feedback. 
All right, here we go. So, whoo, shake off those arms. It is time to go to long bands. So, so you don't get confused, you can throw your short bands onto the ground in front of you. Because we're gonna be using the long bands from the side position. And once again, please note, don't wanna put the bands on, you can use a weight. All right, so come on, step up, bottom out, get back on with your, get your feet back going with the, let's look at a feet for a second, let's just think about our feet. Let's kind of push with the outer edges, like catch yourself on the outer edge of your foot. This is good to increase the circulation and the feeling in those feet. And then push and feel more for your big toe. So almost like you're allowing the arch to roll down a little bit. I just want you to feel the difference. Now I want you to think about pushing from your heels, keeping your toes light on the board. Light, like almost peeled off. And then I want you to push from your toes. You have to lean a little forward, push from your toes into the board. All right, right now we're back onto board. So we're gonna grab the right long tube. We're gonna bring it up. The way I want you to hold it, if you can, is put it up and then grab it from behind so that it comes down the front of the forearm like this. All right, oh, my board's a little off, so let me move over. There we go. All right, so from here, palm is up. I just want you to go up and down and put something on a shelf in front of you. Up and down. Try to find your center and balance on the board. Try to balance, I'm not rocking, I'm trying to balance. Now, it doesn't have to go real high. As a matter of fact, if you have any shoulder issues, this is high enough right here. But of course in life, the shelf might be there, so feel free to push a little higher if you've got the range of motion without pain. Remember to stay in the pain-free range always. Go up and down, working that deltoid and upper back or trapezius. Again, beautiful. All right, now hold it, hold it, hold it. Now all we're gonna do is go up and down, this is where the balance comes in, to a calf raise. So calf raise, down, up, down. Try to balance that board. I know this is gonna be one of the more challenging balance moves. Up, down, up, down. You got it. Keep going, four more, three more, two, and last one. All right, bring the arm down, shake it out a little bit. Good, stir it up, stir the pot. This is a good traction exercise for the shoulder girdle. All right, now bring it back to center. Now this time we're gonna rock and row, and we're gonna bring that arm up to what we call the side or lateral deltoid raise. Palm is down, knuckles are up. You're probably not gonna feel this until about the last third of the range of motion, that's okay. Squeeze up, rock back. Squeeze up, rock back. Wiggle your fingers every once in a while to ensure you're not giving me the death grip over here with your left hand. Whew. Working the shoulders up and down. Good. You've got this. Four more. Three, two, last one. Now hold it here and take and cross your hand over. So now your left hand is on the right pole and we're gonna pivot turn to the lunge position. Lunge position. You're gonna bring that arm out straight in front of you. Front raise. We're gonna lunge and raise. And it's okay if your board bottoms out and it's okay if you rock it out. Either way that feels more comfortable for you. So we lunge for the legs, we lift for the arms, keep that arm straight. Don't forget to exhale when you feel the strongest or the most, most forceful part of the move. That's probably right about there, right? Push and pull. Stop when your muscles say, I've had enough. Believe yourself. <laughs> you don't wanna to go to the point of pain or cheat. Cheat means that you try to do too much momentum or change or not maintain good form and alignment. Four more, and three, 
and two, and then last one. And now from here, I want you to rock forward purposefully. I want you to come down and grab about mid-tube. This leg is behind you, softly touching your board. You're bent over, bent over row, up and down. And notice how I had to grip my band about midway. I call that cinching up so that I could get some measurable strength or resistance in this position. Good. Now this is for those larger back muscles, the latissimus dorsi. So squeeze and feel for it. This is a very unfunctional exercise because we have to bend over and pick things up. And we want to be able to maintain that core strength as we do so. So you don't want to let your back move. Nice neck alignment. Good. The closer you grip towards the anchor, which is the bottom, the more you're going to feel this. Now hold the last one up. Here comes our superset. Curl, 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 curl. Bicep and hamstrings curling together. Nice. Work on balance. Hold on to that pole. Lean in, but don't round your back. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Come up. Ooh. Relax, take a breath. That was a hard set there, wasn't it? Let it just kind of go up and then down, heel to the ground. Curl under, hip flexor stretch, calf stretch. Hip flexor and calf. Hip flexor and calf. Now leave it in the back with the grounding on the left side. Take the tubing. This is gonna be strange, I think. Wrap it around the handle and hold it there. Give yourself some, some yardage over here. And then give me a little rotator cuff opening and closing. So from the front, here's what it looks like. Out and in. My elbow stays at my waistline. I'm just using that amount of the band that I've kind of cinched against the pole. Nice. And this is a really important exercise for shoulder health. If you've ever had any rotator cuff issues, this is probably one of the rehab or prehab exercises you were given. External rotation. That's nice. Ooh, keep breathing. Two more. Last one. All right. Bring both feet together on the end. Last exercise on this side. See how I'm still cinched up? In other words, I'm grabbing so that there's some nice tension. I'm going to do a hip hinge deadlift. So I'm going to keep the hand right at my belly, and I'm just going to stick my hips out to the back and then push them through to the front. This is an awesome hamstring and glute exercise. And the reason I really like it, if done properly, what's properly? Properly means that I'm moving from my hip but I'm not moving out of good spinal alignment. The spine is following the movement. Here's what bad looks like. This is bad. Oh, it looks more like a candy cane, right? Okay, no, hinge it. And you know when you're doing it right because you feel it in those gluteal buttocks muscles and hamstrings. And it's hard to condition those muscles because our quadriceps, the front of the thighs, they tend to get a lot more work with all the lunging and stepping. So this is a wonderful way to get those less used muscles. Beautiful. Inhale and exhale. Two more. Last one. Now, here's what I want. Stay in the hinge. This is for you, Craig. And then alternate and try as hard as you can. Think those toes up, come on. Toes up, toes up. And if you wanna add a little pulse row with that back arm as you're pulsing, keep your back flat, your chest open, your neck long. Pull, lift, you can do it. Get those toes up. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one, done. Oh yes, 
Shake it off, shake it off. Swing it off. All right, come back to the center. Come back and find the other handle. We are getting there, we're plugging right through. Remember we started by holding onto the handle, fingers here, band is coming down the front of our arm, right? And we start with that, put it on the shelf from either a balanced position or a little rocking position. I'll leave that up to you. They both have their benefits. When we rock, we feel it a little more as we bend that knee. When we stabilize, we kind of feel a little shaky throughout. So maybe do a little bit of both. Rock it and then stabilize it. Remember to reduce the range of motion if you're feeling any pain in this shoulder girdle as you do this lift. Take it to the height that you're comfortable with. Good job. Up, down. You've got this. I promise you some good stretches after we're done, okay? Stick with me. Raise your hand if you're having fun. Art, art. Sounds like a Dan joke. Yes, Dan does have a sense of humor. Four more. Three. Two. Now hold and calf raise. Up. Remember, this is going to take a lot of stabilizing, so be ready for it. Up, down. Up. Use those calf muscles. Heels up. Heels down. Good. You've got this. Lift, lower. Lift, lower. Oh, this feels great. Come on. Four more. Three. Two. Last one. Okay, put that tube down. Shake it or stir it around. Get rid of some of that tension. Throw it into the ground. Throw it into the ground. All right, grab that tube again. Lateral raises up and down. Lift it. And remember on this one, you're probably only going to feel it towards the end range of motion. Up and down. Breathing, engaging those feet, engaging those hips, those thighs, keeping that chin parallel to floor. This, was, this workout's a lot easier to keep your head up because we're not moving our feet that much. So try to really work on that nice head shoulder alignment throughout. Four more. Three. Two, one, and then we're gonna turn to the side. All right, here comes our lunges with that front raise. Now on this one, again, you can feel free to rock into it, or you can keep it grounded on the front end and just lunge and lift the arm leg pattern together. Excellent. Notice how I keep my head right over my shoulders because we have a tendency to let this happen and that chin jutting is not ideal on the neck musculature at all. So try to keep it lined up. Bend and lift. Awesome. Four more. Three more, last two, last one, and then we're gonna ground it out in the back. We're gonna cinch down and we're gonna row. And remember on this, if you want to, you can rock and row. <laughs> like the way that sounds. But in many cases, it might feel better just to row from a solid position. Weight in your back heel. Nice. Down and up. Working those large picker uppers, those back muscles. Down. 
and up. That's it. Keep that nice long line from head to hip. Wiggle your fingers every once in a while. Breathe. Inhale and blow it out. Four more. And three. And two. And last one. Stand it up. Now, this is that one where we kind of hooked it, took the yardage around the pole, held it there, and then we brought the feet, well, we can bring the feet together on this because we're going to move to the front anyway. And remember what it looks like from the front is this. Rotator cuff. Externally out. Thumbs up. Nice. Go back and reposture. Get yourself really tall. Plumb line it. Ear over shoulder. Shoulder over the hip. Open. Close. Almost. Good. Four more times. Four and three, two, and then we walk over to the edge of our board. Again, grip down on your tubing so you've got some tension in it. Hold on and give me that nice clean hip hinge, keeping your hand right around mid waist, letting that tube do its thing. As you come up, you feel the resistance. Tighten your buttocks as you pull under. Good. We're almost there, game. Last exercise, and then we get to stretch. Hinge it back in front. So again, today's focus was strength with balance. We did have some requests for more strength exercise-oriented workouts. So today we doubled up. We doubled up our tubes. We doubled up our strength factor. Hopefully, you'll sleep like a baby. Because getting good sleep was our wellness tip. All right, now hold it down and pump it up. Pump it up. Good, just a little pulse. Pulse. Beautiful. Four, three, two, one, and we're done. Woo! Cross and open. All right, gang, let's step off, quickly get a little water. We have five, eh, six minutes to go for some spinal stretching. Get some water, finish it up. Okay, so come back behind the board and let's just stand tall. Lift your chest up, pull back a little bit. Inhale, chin up, chest up, and then exhale and flat back down. Hold it here. Tuck your chin to your chest. Stretch out the back of your neck. All right, again, lift up. Push through, chest to ceiling. You can lean back a little bit. Tighten your buttocks muscles. Open up this chest, but keep the chin from going too high. Lean from this part of your body, the upper back, the chest. And forward. Tuck your chin under, stretch the back of your neck. Try to keep your legs straight on this, your back flat. And then bring it back to center. Awesome, one arm up and over, hold. Now give me a nice tilt with your body. Oh yes, take a stretch at your lats, side of your back, and twist that arm for the rotators and the shoulder girdle. Let your hips sway that way. Good. Now stand back up tall, hold here, take the arm forward, and then pat yourself on the back. Elbow comes up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, two more, 
Last one. Awesome. Bring this hand down and let's crescent over to the other side. Lean with your body first. Reach out with that arm and then sway your hip over if you can. And then start twisting that arm. Nice deep breath. And then bring it back up. Bring that arm over. Lift up and down. Now I typically try to hold my static or my more flexibility oriented stretches for about three to five deep breaths. It's about 20 seconds. Plus it reminds you to breathe if you count it by breaths. Last one. Awesome. All right, now we're gonna turn to the side. Your left leg is front, your right leg is back. And I just want you to fold forward and keep both legs as straight as you can. So you feel that nice stretch in your hamstrings. Your back hand is on your thigh. Just hold here. Both heels are down. Now bend the front knee and give me a warrior pose, arm up. Try to push your hip forward. Try to stretch your arm up to the ceiling. Inhale and exhale. Think about bending and tucking. So the hip is back here, push it under. Open up that chest and shoulder. Lengthen that neck by dropping your shoulder blades towards your hips. Excellent. Let the arm melt down, come behind you, and open up. So let me show you what this looks like, but don't move. So I'm opening up here to open that anterior side of the shoulder and all the chest musculature. Now from here, we're just gonna go down and up, down and up, keeping that chin and chest high. All right, back to the center. Roll it out a little bit. Ease it out. Snake it out, I don't know. Bring it to the other side. All right, both legs straight, hand to thigh. Lean over and try to keep both legs nice and straight. We're almost done for the day. Nice deep breath. Inhale and exhale. Since we're taking more time with the breath, think about making it deeper and taking longer to let it come out. Inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth, and nose or the mouth. All right, bend that front knee, push that hip forward, lean up with the arm. Warrior pose up. Try to tuck that hip under, if it's back there, push it here. Stretch and feel a nice stretch through the core, through the hip flexor, through the shoulder girdle. Up. Breathe. Pull in with your abdominal wall so you don't over arch your back. Sink down a little bit. You got that. All right, bring that arm behind you, remember? And then let's just add a little up-down motion in the legs. But remember, we really are thinking about opening up this side, right here, chest and shoulder. Dip down and come back up. I wanna thank you all for being here on Wednesdays. Makes my day a great way to start off and get 60 up. Two more. Last one. Pivot back to the center now. Let's just do a slow lunge, sink, quicksand. Release it, release it, relax it. As I bend my knee and I shrug my shoulder up and down, 
Let's get in the flow. Four more. And three. Last two. Last one. And find center. Palms up. Or I'm sorry, palms down. Hold here. Push your shoulder blades downward. Kind of like a Pez candy dispenser. Push down and lengthen that neck. Lift up with your palms so your fingers are up. And then push them down. So see how mine are folding over the handles? Lift up. Inhale, fill up the lungs. Exhale. Shh. Inhale, fingers up. Exhale, fingers down. One more. Inhale up. Exhale down. Now bring one arm up. Wiggle the fingers. Wiggle the fingers. And then let it come down. Other arm up. Wiggle the fingers. And let it come down. Walk the feet in, toes and heels to the center. Toes and heels, toes and heels, toes and heels. Stand tall. Light touch on the poles, bring one knee up and circle it around slowly. Other side, circle it around slowly. Again, hip up, hip around, and down. Keep going. more. Last one. Now feet together. Hula the hips. Hula the hips. Other direction. Put the right foot up on the board. Circle it around. Left foot. Circle it around. Easing our body down through the cool down. Relaxation. And then put that foot back on the ground. Now easy knee bend. Just bend slightly and stand tall. Bend slightly stand tall. Let your shoulders shrug as you do that movement. So they come down and they wrap back and around. Two more. Breathe. Inhale. Last one. Stand tall. If you're comfortable with both arms, bring them back down. Inhale up. Gather the energy above, pull it down into your body, and leave what you don't need for the next workout on the ground. Shake it off. And give yourself a big hand. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I will come in and I will read every comment made. So please do comment. I'm so glad to see those of you that are here. And if you have any questions about this workout or any other workout you take or workout you want to take, if you leave it in your chat box, um, I will definitely uh, get to it. Now, Sandy, I see you say, where do you get that machine? And I'm assuming you mean the 60 Up machine. And if you uh, go to 60 Up online, uh, on your Google, it'll take you right to where you can purchase it. And I'm not sure, but I know there was a big special going on for the holidays. So if you joined us and you just don't happen to have one of these, do get one. They are such a great device for so many reasons, not just balance and fall prevention, but also upping the ante on everything you do, whether it's a stretch or a strength move or a cardio. And we're here every day giving you cool workout tips and and keeping you working out uh, at no extra charge 
So let's build this community. And until I see you next week on Wednesday, stay safe, keep working, get your sleep in, stay hydrated, eat well, and that's it, signing off. Kathy Stevens, thanks again. See you soon.